Have you ever experienced a thunderclap headache, like the worst headache of your entire life? That can represent a sign of what's called a subarachnoid hemorrhage or a ruptured aneurysm. September is Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month, and I wanna share some facts with you guys that may save a life. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 42-year-old male who presented to our emergency department after experiencing the worst headache he's ever had in his entire life. He was eating dinner with his family, and then when he experienced this headache, he went and lay down to try to sleep it off. This is actually what he should not have done. Instead, his wife found him a little bit later after she put the kids to bed in a pool of vomit and completely unresponsive. The CT scan of his brain was performed that showed this. For reference, a normal CT scan of the brain should look something like this. So all of this white stuff that we're seeing in the base of the brain is actually blood. That blood is in the subarachnoid space deep in the brain where our circle of Willis lies. What you talking about, Willis? I'm talking about the circle of Willis in our brain. We actually have one of those. Our brain is supplied by an extensive amount of artery and there is a portion of our brain called the circle of Willis where most of the main vessels lie. Our brain is supplied by both carotid and vertebral arteries and comes up the base of the brain to form this circle of arteries that go on to supply the deeper portions of our brain. So right around the brainstem is the circle of arteries that we call the circle of Willis that supply our brain. We have three main blood vessels that supply our brain called the posterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery, and the anterior cerebral artery. The posterior communicating artery and the anterior communicating artery make connections to all of these arteries to make a circle to collaboratively supply the brain. And as you see in this picture, they are a common location for brain aneurysms. Think of any blood vessel like a tube that supplies fluid flow. And if there is a weakness in any spot of this tube, you can get what's called an aneurysm. There are two main types that we call either a saccular or a berry aneurysm, or a fusiform aneurysm, which is where the entire blood vessel can swell out. And they're common. One in 50 people have an unruptured aneurysm and you may not even know it. Every 18 minutes, a brain aneurysm ruptures. There are seven risk factors for brain aneurysm and many of those I mentioned in our case, including smoking, high blood pressure, a family history of someone that's had a brain aneurysm, and age over 40. Women are more common than men to have brain aneurysms, and drug use can also cause aneurysms, particularly cocaine. Why cocaine? Because cocaine and other stimulants like methamphetamines can cause a sudden spike in your blood pressure and can precipitate a rupture. All of these things mentioned here are the most common presenting symptoms of a ruptured aneurysm, with the most common being the thunderclap headache. 15% of people that experience a ruptured aneurysm don't even survive to make it to the hospital. And 25% of people will die in the first 24 hours. That's why it's so important if you experience this type of presentation that you go immediately to the ER. Early diagnosis is critical in the survival. Upon presentation to the ER, it is critical to obtain a CT and CTA of the brain. A CTA is an angiography where we specifically look at the blood vessels. On this CTA in our patient, we can see that he has an anterior communicating artery aneurysm, and on the reconstructions, you can see the aneurysm right here. As mentioned here, the ACOM is one of the most common locations of an aneurysm. It's important to secure a ruptured aneurysm within 24 hours to prevent re-bleeding, which could prove to be life-threatening. That's because 70% of patients that re-bleed will die. There are two ways to treat aneurysms, and the first way is an open craniotomy where we can place a clip over the aneurysm and close it off. That's obviously invasive because we have to make an incision on the skull and go into the brain itself to place the clip over the aneurysm. The other way that we can treat aneurysms is an endovascular treatment where we can go through an artery and feed up a coil and then place it into the aneurysm dome, which will clot off the aneurysm and prevent rebleeding. How we decide if a patient gets a clipping or a coiling depends on a multitude of factors that will be determined by the neurosurgeon that's treating this case. In our patient's case, he underwent an endovascular coiling of his aneurysm. Here is a really cool video that shows how we treat an aneurysm that is being coiled. 
the catheter is placed into the artery or that catheter is placed a stent that spans the aneurysm dome. After that's done, then a wire is fed into the aneurysm itself and the coiling can then be deployed. Here you can see the coiling that's being deployed into the aneurysm dome. After it's deployed, the wiring is then detached and the catheter is subsequently removed. These patients are typically very critically ill and have to be managed in the neurointensive care unit for several weeks. I could go into a whole nother video on how we care for these patients in the weeks after we treat their aneurysm. The bottom line is that they are very sick for a long time. In our patient's case, he underwent coiling of his aneurysm like I mentioned, and he also had to have a drainage tube placed into his brain to help alleviate the pressure. He even had to have a permanent drainage tube called a ventricular peritoneal shunt placed. After a long duration of intensive care treatment and rehabilitation, our patient survived his aneurysm. He went on to having some disabilities long term, but he did get back to a relatively normal life. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.